fact that I've only been a part of two churches my whole life. Greater Faith in Stockton and moved in 2001 to Fresno, Fresno State, the only church I've ever been a part of in Fresno. It's this historic site, St. Rest Baptist Church. Man, I love this place. I love the atmosphere, the culture, the family dynamics of what it means to be a church family. Remember when I got here, 2001, Pastor Dr. Chester Riggins moved from this place right across the street and ended up coming here to this location that we're at today. Never in my wildest dreams would I've ever imagined going from simply a member of the church, a college student, to then becoming the youth pastor under Dr. Reverend Shane Scott. And then who would ever thought a young man from Stockton would become the pastor of an historic church? Man, where it was at back then in 2001, kids huddled in the back of the church and kicked it by themselves. The ushers back then, it was Sister Britton. Ann Bolden was still here. She would pinch the kids and tell them to stop talking in church. Brother Bradley and Brother Grant, Brother Wiley, they'd be all up front and they'd be singing the older songs. Pastor Riggins would stand up and preach and in the middle of his preaching, when everybody really knew it was a good sermon, he would say something about like, am I right about it? Sylvia Norman would be directing the choir. Clarence Pennywell would be singing it. Gloria Majors would be singing with him. Philip Major would be on the drums. Man, that was old school days. Much has changed since then, since 2001. Pastor Riggins has passed away. Pastor Scott has come and taught us what it meant to be a more of a community-minded association as a church. And then this young guy who has never one time pastored a church became the pastor of a church. We as a community of believers have done it together. And now we're in the calendar year of 2017 and the present day we have seen so many things come to the life of the church or just 16 alone we've seen our, our food distribution center take off where the community is taking more of a life of what it means to be a part of this church and we have taken our community and called our community a family we are now a community minded church trendsetters establishing our own trends our own models becoming who we need to be and not worrying about what the world says no matter what the world is doing no matter how they're acting we have to be different that's what that romans 12 1 through 2 says beseech you therefore brother by the mercies of god you will present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service it means being who you are in christ not worried about what people think about you we have to establish some sort of vision for what 17 is going to look like and I think it's gonna look like this. What if we stop simply being a trendsetter and we start trying to make trendsetters? What would it look like if St. West steps out into the community and transforms community members into being members of God's family? What would it look like to have another Maishay Martin or have another Mother Powell and we grab those individuals that are at where we used to be and show them there's a better way and that way is Jesus Christ and instead of being trendsetters in the house of God what if we make trendsetters outside of the house of God bring them in the house of God and train them to go back out and find new trendsetters Matthew 28 says this go ye out therefore into all nations this year we are going to be committed like we've never been committed before we are going to build a park in this community we are going to establish a place for our children of our church and the children of the community to be able to have a place where they can call home and we're going to call it the rest part. What if we can have community members, Hispanic, Loatian, Hmong, white and black, what if the church on the inside reflects what heaven looks like up there? We are competing with this world that is trying to take who God has called us to lead. So 2016 is over. There's nothing you can do about it. You made your mistakes. You made your hiccups. Your situations may have got you down. Problems may have gotten to you. Financially, you may not be in the place that you want to be in. Your children may not be acting the way you want them to act. Family may not be the way you want it to be. And even ministry may have taken a toll on you in 2016. But it's done with. You made it. But it's 17 now. 
17 is a new chapter. It's a new day. That number seven means completion. Number six means man, that everything that man attempted to do to you in 16 is over because 17, God's going to complete exactly what he started. So 17 is a year of hope. 17 is a year of prosperity. 17 is a year where your ministry takes off and you blow up and the ministry becomes greater than it's ever been before, not because of you, but because of what God did through you. Your mistakes did not stop you. Your mistakes really just helped you. So in 17, go get them. Get everybody that was ever hurt, everybody that was ever down, everyone that tried to quit, the people that tried to commit suicide. Go to the Pavarella House, go to the homeless shelter, go to Moda, go everywhere that you need to go and get people just like you and convert them over. That's what a trendsetter is. That's what a trendsetter is about. That's us, that's you. We're ex cons, ex fiends, ex dope addicts, ex mistakes. But God took every one of our mistakes and made us who we are today. It's 17. We made it. Now let's do it! Yeah.